this is Deboki and today I'm going to be just doing a quickish, maybe, I'm not actually sure how long this is going to take, um, rundown of my reading over the past week. So post-election I was definitely in the place where I needed just escapist reads. I just didn't, like I had been reading a lot of nonfiction. I just like needed to take a step back. When I need escapist books, I think I turn to what a lot of people turn to, which is romance novels. And I think I read almost an obscene amount last week. And I just think romance novels are so great when you're in this kind of mood because they're not, I don't want to say they're formula formulaic because they are necessarily. Like I think a lot of writers have familiar patterns, but I think what's so great about romance is like, you know, no matter what the angst is in the book, like you know it's going to end well. And they just, they tend to move very quickly and you just, yeah, you, once you know who the author is, you usually know what you're in for. With that said, I actually did kind of find a few new authors um, over the past week, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm not necessarily going to be doing super in-depth reviews, and to be honest, there's quite a, because there are quite a few books um, in this list, I, I don't remember all the characters' names, I don't remember all of the details, um, but I just wanted to do this rundown to list off some of the authors and books that I found, um, and yeah, just give some, some very quick notes on what I thought about the books. So the first author that I decided to kind of check out uh, was Courtney Milan. So I've read one of her books before. Um, it was a Regency, I forgot the name, I mentioned it in one of my like first few videos. And I remember I liked it, but I thought the angst was a little bit heavy. Um, so I decided to read a contemporary series of hers. This was the Cyclone series, which is kind of set around this tech company called Cyclone. And there are two books that I read, they were Trade Me and Find Me. So Trade Me is about this really rich, like, billionaire kid who's inheriting the cyclone company um and this girl this who is um whose mother is fighting for immigration rights and her family is incredibly poor and she's basically living in a garage in san francisco and the two of course clash and then decide to trade places and yeah and then the second one was that i decided to read was find me and this is set in like very much an academic setting um so the the guy is a pi and a physics chemistry kind of lab and then the female protagonist is a trans character who writes in a, a blog about the apocalypse I think and they have this online flirtation with each other which is contrasted by the fact that in real life when they meet each other they don't know who the other person is they don't know that they've been talking to this person they meet um via other people that they know and really hate each other so there's this whole thing where they don't know that they know each other and yeah. Yeah, so the I did like both of these books but I think Courtney Milan is one of those writers who's just not for me. I think her writing is good, I just don't like the way that the angst is really integrated into the story. It kind of feels like there's only two things going on in the characters' lives. There's the angst, then there's the romance, and then the angst is done like the way that the angst is mapped out is basically in conjugation with the romance and like it makes sense that it's done that way like I don't think that's different from a lot of books but for some reason it just doesn't really gel well for me. I, I think some of it is just that the angsty parts seem to be all those characters think about and it starts to get a little bit overwhelming like the professor character in Find Me is like always thinking about how he focused to, focuses too much on his work and you just get to a point where you're like, I get it, like I get it, I get it, I get that you're like on tenure track and you're stressed out, I get it. The next the next um, author was completely new for me, so this is Joanna Shoup, and I started reading her Knickerbocker series, which is set during the Gilded Age um, in US history, so this is, a, this is kind of a time frame that I don't think I've read that many romance novels set during. Um, so I read Magnate, which is about a woman who wants to start her own investment firm and she approaches a man who she thinks is kind of her brother's friend um, or to get help her set up this company and yeah so they get caught in a compromising position and get forced to marry each other. The second one is Baron so this is the brother of the girl from the first book. He is now trying to run for political office. One of the things that's in his way is this woman who is pretending to be a fortune teller and of course he meets her to try to get her to back up and ends up falling in love with her. I thought I really really liked this both of these books. I really liked the setting. Um, like I said it's not something that I've read that much in romance novels um, or really I think in any historical fiction. So it was just yeah it was really it was really interesting to see how she approached like the topic of class and women. I really enjoyed the characters. I think there's a lot of kind of moral ambiguity to the these characters. They're kind of like they're definitely in a level of gray with how they treat people that 
doesn't ever completely uh, sink to just pure asshole-ishness, but I think it was kind of interesting to see how it shapes out in the book. So because I enjoyed the Knickerbocker series so much, I decided to then read her first series, which is the Wicked Deception series. So this, the basic premise is that these are all relationships that start with a heavy amount of deception. Um, so the first one is The Countess Duchess, which is about a woman who married this guy when she was very young. Um, he pretty much, as soon as the wedding was over, just immediately ran off to go kind of lead this hedonistic lifestyle. But she she needs to save her house and to do that she needs an heir so she decides to go to Italy to pretend to be a courtesan and seduce him to have so that she can have a baby and of course eventually it comes out what's happened and he's really angry but then they're in love and all the shit after this um, was the harlot countess so the harlot countess is about this woman and this man who when they, when they were first kind of coming out into society they had actually kind of been in love with each other he was going to propose to her but she was found in a position with another guy that was a bit compromising um, unfortunately no one wanted to hear her side of the story so they went their separate ways she ended up married to someone else and has come back into London or she's come back to the city um, after being widowed and is now working um, secretly as a cartoonist publishing car uh, cartoons about the guy um, who is a politician that are not particularly fan flattering and he is trying to find out the identity of this cartoonist and of course shenanigans ensue, things get healed and they come back together. And the last one was The Lady Hellion. So this one was actually my favorite, which I was not expecting. So the basic premise is that the woman is fighting for, to help protect uh, prostitutes and abused women in the city. And she is also sort of friends with this grumpy dude who um, turns out he has PTSD as well. Um, and so they kind of, this is kind of like a friends to lovers sort of story. I, I really, really enjoyed all of these books. I think the path of the relationships are really, really well done. I really like the stories. The characters are all really fun. I really like how she's able to build out, you know, very different, you know, high-spirited women who have very diff distinct personalities. Yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. So because I was in this right Regency mood, I decided to go back to Sarah McLean and her uh, Rules of Scoundrels or whatever that series is. And I had read three out of the four books in this series. The only one I hadn't read was actually the third one, which is No Good Duke Goes Unpunished, um, just because it didn't sound particularly interesting to me for some reason. The story for No Good Duke Goes Unpunished is this duke has believed that he killed a woman for most of his life, and most of societies believe this as well, um, but she comes back and basically reveals to him, like, surprise, I'm not dead, and they fall in love and all that. Really, I really enjoy this one so much more than I thought because the tension between them is very, very well done. The heroine, she has a lot of very good reasons for you know, keeping her distance from him and really pulling away from him. She's not only kind of in uh, having tension with the Duke, but she's a character, but she's also having, she also has tension with a lot of his friends who, you know, when they find out the truth, are not super pleased that this woman has been alive all this time. So I think, especially because these are characters who you've known to, you've gotten to know from other books, it's really fun to see that interaction with her because usually these characters are, like when you have these romance novels being built out like this, all the characters automatically are like rooting for each other's relationships and this one is the one of the few ones where they're not because yeah there's this whole backstory that has really put this guy through the ringer. So moving back to contemporary after this I decided to read The Haining Game by Sally Thorne. So this is actually based on a recommendation list from Sarah McLean um, that she published in the Washington Post um, which was her top romance novels of 2016. So The Haining Game is set in a book publishing house and it's about this guy and this girl who really hate each other and of course over the course of the book fall in love with each other. They're also competing for the same uh, position so there's this other like kind of aspect to it and I like this one. I really I love like love-hate relationships and you know seeing those like change and I was kind of I kind of felt at times that this was one of those books I could have hated. It's written in first person. The main female character is kind of one of those twee, quirky kind of girls that sometimes I find frustrating, especially in contemporary romances, um, because it can sometimes come off as a little one-dimensional. But there's so much humor in the book, and I think that both of the characters kind of the sadder aspects of their lives are brought out, but not in that overwhelming, angsty, like, 
my life is always shitty and then sometimes I talk to this guy kind of way. Yeah, it was just really fun. I thought it was a really, really funny book. I think if you're looking for something kind of light and cute, I would recommend it. If you do kind of hate those twee sort of characters, this might be a little bit more borderline though. Um, I followed this up with uh, Dark Wild Night by Christina Lauren. So this is part of another series. I, uh, this is part of a series. I don't remember the name of the series right now, but the premise of the series is that three friends went to Vegas, met up with three guys, and they all three got married and and this is what follows. So I haven't read the other books yet. This recommendation was also from Sarah McLean. I think this is from her website where she has a long list of romance recs, um, which I highly recommend like just kind of quickly looking through because she gives very, very short descriptions that I think are actually really good for helping you figure out if you want to read them. Um, so Dark Wild Night is about um, one of these couples who annulled their marriage, their, their Vegas marriage. Um, they did not like hook up at all during their Vegas wedding, um, but are, have since become friends and kind of sort of regret not hooking up. So the heroine is a uh, comic book writer whose latest comic book is being turned into a movie. The guy is the owner of a comic book store and it's just really sweet. They're like good friends and they're sort of navigating how to turn their friendship into a relationship. And I really, I was a little bit nervous because you could really feel the angst like coming on. You could see what was gonna happen in terms of that angst. But yeah, it just went really smoothly. I really liked it. I, it was also really funny. I, for me, this and the hating game, I really liked the style of writing. I think there was like a really, there was a really good kind of stylized approach to writing the story and uh, correlating that to the different characters' perspectives. I think Dark Wild Night was also first person point of view, which Again, I don't usually like, but it works really. It worked really well in this story. Um, moving back to Regency, um, again, this is coming from Sarah McLean's long list of recommendations. I'm actually, I'll link to this below because I find this list amazing um, and I'm still gonna work my way through it. The next book was a really short book. It was A Matter of Class by Mary Ballard. The book is about a guy and a girl who are basically kind of forced to marry each other through um, circumstances that are not great. The woman is kind of, and her reputation is in ruins. The guy is like the waste of space. I don't want to talk too much about what happens in the book because um, I think the the moment you I, like it's hard for me to say anything because the moment I say something, it'll become very obvious what happens. There are things that I think were easy to predict. If you read anything on the front cover or the back cover, you'll probably able to be able to predict what happened. But I think this was just a really fun book. It's very short, so if you're looking for an even faster romance book, I would recommend this one. And then last for now, but I'm still probably working through this, um, So, and this is still definitely not least, was Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. Um, so this was also Regency-ish. This is about a woman who uh, goes to France to in search of her brother, who is also kind of a waste of space. He's under the influence of this duke who's basically well known for being terrible, basically called Beelzebub by a lot of people. Um, and of course they fall in love, they end up married um, because her reputation is also in tatters. Everyone's reputation is in tatters. Um, but yeah, they get married under these circumstances and it's basically them, her helping him figure his shit out. And it was a ton of fun. I was not sure what to expect from this. I feel like I've heard of this book a lot. I think it's pretty well respected and beloved by people who read romance. It was a really great read. It was really, really funny and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So like I said, I a lot of the, I think overall all of these books that I read, I would recommend pretty much all of them. Whether or not you're gonna like them is dependent very much more on your own preference. And that seems like an obvious thing to say. Like of course, whether or not you like something is based on your own preference. I think with romance, it's like kind of a step further. I think it's so, I think people know kind of what they're looking for when it comes to romance in a way that's different than, you know, compared to a lot of genres. So I think, um, yeah, just pay attention to like, you know, what the plot is about, but the books themselves are kind of solidly written and none of them like made me angry. So I would recommend them if any of them sound appealing. If you want me to explain any of these plots in a little bit more detail then you know, lady does this, guy does that, and then they fall in love. Like I can totally do that if you want to ask more. I'm still looking for more romance novels to read. I need to read, I'm, I have um, Beloved by Beverly Jenkins, which I really want to read. I haven't read any of her books yet and she's, like, I know that her books are supposed to be really, really good, so that is definitely on my TBR, and I am sure that I will get more that I need to read in the next few weeks. So, yes, that's my massive romance rundown for the past week. Yeah, bye.